All right, here we go. Let's continue this Angmore Awakens series. So I'm using the suggested elves deck that was provided in the rules insert for the player cards. And as <laughs> this user points out, Eowyn isn't an elf. Yeah. So this is supposed to be an elves deck. It's it's curious to me that they went this route with the deck building because the Angmore Awakened cycle isn't really an elf cycle. It, it's strongly a Dunedain cycle with some elf support. So there's a lot of cards that help you play these Noldor elves that aren't available using just the core set and the player cards that came. But this is the deck they built. It uses heroes from the core set and then one new hero from this cycle. And this is on paper, looking at it, very strong willpower. This is a willpower deck. It's also a cancellation deck. You got hasty strokes, you got test of wills. Um, it's got some threat reduction here. Unexpected courages are nice. So once again, I really think that this deck is supposed to be played in conjunction with the other. So the other deck handles combat, this one handles questing, and these two, these two decks should work really well together. They should be pretty fun. So by itself, this deck is going to struggle in combat. I mean, just looking here, you do have Fair and Perilous, which is helpful, but um, you can't take this deck up against a, a tough quest that you need to kill a lot of things. So I'm just going to be taking it up against the Oath. I mean, the Oath is about as simple as you can get, and I'm still concerned how I'm going to handle combat. All right, so I'm assuming you've played this one before. We're going to set a card aside. We're going to add a location to the staging area. Nine progress needed to advance. So we set aside the troop. The card in the staging area is just a 2-2, and we can't cancel encounter cards. Okay, and then the hero lineup. So Lore Glorfindel, he's from the core set, 3-3-1-5. Three, three, you can pay a resource to heal somebody, and he's Noldor Noble Warrior and Lore. We also have from the core set Spirit Eowyn. She's going to quest for four, and you can discard a card to increase her willpower by one. She's nine threat, one attack, one defense, three hit points. And then probably the best hero from this cycle, Arwen Undomiel. Spirit, nine threat, three, one, two, three. Noldor Noble, action. Discard a card from your hand to add one resource to a Noldor hero's resource pool or to Aragorn. Limit once per round. So that's amazing. And if you add them all together, 30 starting threat. Okay, so this deck is all about lots of card draw. Like, I don't see any problem drawing cards. There's a card in here called Elven Light that works amazing with Arwen. If you pair her up with Aragorn, she can give Aragorn resources. And Aragorn can get different spheres based on Calabrian Stone. Uh, the sword that was broken is also a card that gives them a different sphere. So they work really well together. The piloting instructions say that Arwen is supposed to be your defender. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. All right, we get the Gladium Weaver. Stand and fight. Protector of Lorien. Gleowine. Elven Jeweler. Ooh, and a side quest. Gather info. This is a good opening hand because gather info is going to let me find a card I don't have. Protector of Lorien is how Arwen is supposed to help us defend. And we draw stand and fight. One thing you're going to notice about this deck compared to the other one is you have way more choices and way more fun things you can do. So first thing I'm going to do is discard a card to Arwen and I can give the resource to herself or to Glorfindel. I'm going to give it to Glorfindel. So he's going to have two lore resources and I'm going to put this token on Arwen to remind myself that I have triggered her ability this round. Now I can afford Gleowine. Gleowine, of course, can exhaust and draw me a card. So let's do that. The card I draw is a test of will. Can't use that right now because of that location. Now let's play a side quest. Gather info. It's free. It takes four progress to clear it. And then after it's cleared, I get to search my deck for a card and add it to my hand. So side quests are a new type of player card that was added in this cycle. And instead of questing against the main quest, you quest against those. And then if you don't clear the side quest in the quest phase, and then at any other point in the round, something says, do something to the quest. It refers back to the main quest. I'm going to put in the Gladium Weaver. She costs one. She can't attack or defend. And then she will shuffle in the top card of your discard pile into your deck. One of the other problems I foresee with this deck is your starting threat is 30. That's not low. So you will get engaged by a lot of enemies. 
And I also want to say a side quest, you don't have to choose it. I'm going to choose it as my current quest, but you don't have to. You can just leave it up in the staging area if you don't want to quest against it, but I want to. Okay, I am questing against two, and then we get a scavenger, so that makes me discard the top card of my deck. It's Unexpected Courage. That's a shame. So he gets a two willpower boost. So I'm currently up against five. I sent everybody that I could have except Arwen, so I made three progress. So I'm one short from clearing gather info, so I will discard a card to Aowen's ability in the action window after you reveal cards. And I have cleared gather information, so that means I get to search my deck for a card. I want to find Elven Light. There we go. That is the engine of this deck. This deck type has an engine where Elven Light is the fuel for the engine, and it fuels resource generation and card draw. So I want to get Elven Light into my hand, give the deck a shuffle. All right, let's travel to the Eaves of Mirkwood. There we go. And then let's engage this guy. He's only attacking for one. So Arwen is going to defend. So it's two defense and there is no shadow. So she's fine. Nobody's ready to attack this guy. And so we're going to go into the next round. And from a player perspective, I'm already enjoying this deck more just because it's giving me more stuff to do than the other deck. But I, I honestly don't know how I'm going to handle combat. I really don't. Alrighty, I get uh, another Test of Will, and then I get an Elven Jeweler with Gleowine. And now I'm going to discard Elven Light to Arwen, and I'm going to give herself the resource. So I have three Spirit Resources and one Lore. Alright, let's spend a Spirit Resource, and we're going to pull Elven Light into our hand. Elven Light says it can be played from the discard pile, and when you... Pull it out of the discard pile into your hand. You also get to draw a card. So that's an excellent combo with Arwen. We get Henemarth. So I'm going to put him into play. I can exhaust him and take a peek at the top card of the encounter deck. And it's just going to be uh, a Tangled Grove, a low threat location. But Arwen and Elven Light, it's, a, it's the combo. It's a dream combo. So you discard Elven Light. She gets a resource. And then if you don't need the resource, you spend it. And you get to draw a card. And Elven Light comes right back into your hand. So it's excellent. All right, uh, let's see. I have two cards I'm going to discard to put in the Elven Jeweler. She has an action that says action, discard two cards to put her into play. Now, you don't have to do that in the planning phase. You can discard those two cards to put that Elven Jeweler into play in any action window. It's just an action. All right, I'm going to spend a resource to pull Elven Light back into my hand, and we draw the single copy of Gandalf. Okay, I know what I'm going to be up against. It's not much. I'm going to send Arwen, Eowyn, and the Weaver. And we're going to clear the active location. We are going to make five progress on the quest. And then I decide I will discard Elven Light in the action window after staging to boost the willpower by one more. So we actually make six progress on the quest. And now let's hopefully kill this little scavenger guy. But first, Elven Light. Let's play it again. And we draw... Oh, this is nice. The Long Defeat. That's a good card. Uh, that, that card maybe should be a two or three of in this deck. All right, the Tangled Grove. X is the number of locations in the staging area. And then Travel. Each player must reveal an encounter card to travel there. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, I want to kill this guy. He's only attacking for one. So the Elven Jeweler has one defense and two hit points. She's going to defend. Oh, there is a Shadow. Uh, choose and discard an attachment from the defending character. If undefended, discard all attachments you control. Uh, that's nasty. I take no damage, and then Glorfindel can attack for three and kill this guy. All right, well, we actually defended and killed something. So that's that's nice. Okay, let's go into the next round. I'm going to try to remember to use Henemarth before I do too much in the round, so I can always kind of have an idea of what's happening. Another stand and fight. All right, let's take a peek at what's coming. The top card is... Ah, oh, these guys are nasty. The Spiders of Mirkwood. They get plus one attack for every exhausted character you have. They're... They're going to be problems. That... that <laughs> That's a problem. All right, Gleowine. I am going to exhaust him. And I get another Test of Will. All right, I'm heavy on Test of Wills. I'm going to put in the Protector of Lorien. So you can discard a card to increase the attached hero's defense and willpower, and you can do that three times a phase. So I'm going to put that on Arwen. That's supposed to be how she helps defend. All right, that's the cards I have in my discard pile. Let's trigger Arwen's ability. So discard a card. 
Elven Light, of course. Then I'm going to spend a Spirit Resource to pull it right back. The card we get is a Forest Snare. Okay. And let's see. So I'm probably going to have to chump the Spider. So I don't think I can send enough Willpower to advance. And I'd like to kill it. And I, I think I have a way to do it. I will send the Weaver for one. Aowen for four. I can boost her by discarding a card. I'll discard a card to Aowen, so I'm sending six. I'm only up against four, but for some reason I think I'm up against five. I think I thought that location was one more. So, all right, so I think it's six against five. So I make one progress. I was supposed to make two. Doesn't matter. It, it does not advance me either way. All right, so now the spider is going to engage me, and it gets plus one attack for each exhausted character I control, and it's already attacking for two. It's It's a pretty nasty enemy. So I'm going to chump this guy because Arwen couldn't handle it even by discarding three cards. So the shadow is nothing. My jeweler is dead. And I need to muster up six attack. And I only have four on the board. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to spend one resource, pull back Elven Light, and I get a Dwarven Tomb. All right. I still have two resources. I have a stand and fight in my hand. So I can play stand and fight and pull this Elven Jeweler out of my discard pile. I also can discard two cards to put the Elven Jeweler that's in my hand into play. So I do have a way of getting both of these Elven Jewelers back into play, so let's do that. Stand and Fight lets you return an ally with a sphere from your discard pile if you spend spirit resources, so two spirit resources to put in the Elven Jeweler, and then two cards being discarded Pops in a second Elven Jeweler. They each can attack for one. And then my two ready heroes can attack for four. Total amount of six. That's a dead spider. That's a pretty neat combo. I mean, it's very tricksy, but it's very cool. It was a very cool way to take down that spider. All right, cool. Let's go into the next round. So far, it's been a very fun deck, but I still know against a harder quest I would have lost already. But against an easier quest like this, I'm, I'm having fun. All right. Another Dwarven Tomb. Henemarf says we got one of these little scavengers coming that get a, a um, threat boost by a card I discard. All right, let's pull back Elven Light. Card we draw. Hasty Stroke, so I can cancel a shadow. All righty. Let's have Glaywine draw me a card. Oh, good. Silver Harp. Good, good, good. That's a card I wanted to see. So I'm going to discard Elven Light to give our winner resource. Spend that resource plus her other one. And I'm going to put in the Silver Harp. Attached to a spirit hero, restricted after a card is discarded from your hand, exhaust a silver harp to return it back to your hand. So you still get the benefit of discarding the card. <laughs> Ironically, my phone goes off when I'm talking about a musical instrument. But yeah, you still get the benefit of discarding the card because it's after it's discarded. All right, let's play the long defeat on the quest. That's a really nice attachment. So after the quest is explored... You can either draw two cards or heal up to five damage among characters in play. And that can go on a side quest or anything. So that is awesome. All right, I won't know what I'm questing against until I discard my top card of my deck when I reveal those goblins. So let's send five and six. And there I'm getting my threat right in the staging area. I realize that's just a one. All right, so I'm sending six. This guy is a one. And then when revealed, discard the top card of your deck. It is a one cost, aw, fair and perilous, that's a good card. Okay, so I'm up against three, and I make enough to clear the quest, and I get to either heal a bunch of damage or draw two cards. I will draw two cards. And I get Galdor, and ooh, another fair and perilous. All right, good, good, good. I, I wanted to make sure I got one. I mean, you do have Dwarven Tombs to pull them back, and Weavers can shuffle stuff back in. All right, stage two, we are going to try to find a forest location. And we're going to add it to the staging area. And then in order to advance, you have to clear at least one goblin trail. So I'm going to grab the goblin trail out of the discard pile. And this says, to travel there, you reveal the top card of the encounter deck. And then when it's explored, you can place six progress on the current quest. Okay, it's three threat. So uh, this seems like a good time to go there. I only have one little wimpy enemy. And the card we reveal is Eyes in the Dark, Doomed One. And then the rest of the text doesn't do anything because it's talking about questing characters and we are in the travel phase. So the rest of that effect completely whiffs. And all right, let's go into combat. This guy is just attacking for one. This is the kind of enemy Arwen can handle. And there's no shadow. Glad we didn't reveal that. 
I don't have any way to get rid of that thing. I would have to do a test of will to get rid of it. And then we can attack for enough to kill this guy. All right, we're in a good place. We have nothing to worry about for combat. And we've already traveled to the location we have to explore in order to advance. And so, yeah, next round, the card we get is another Silver Harp. A very musical deck here. So it's fun to get two of those in play because then you can discard two cards and pull them right back into your hand. All right, we know the card that's coming is a Goblin Runner, and he's going to Surge. So... I once again don't actually know what I'm up against. I will discard Gandalf to give Arwen a resource, and then I will use the Silver Harp to pull Gandalf back into my hand. And then let's trigger Glaowine and draw a card. We got to keep cards in our hand to fuel these effects uh, like uh, Protector of Lorien and Eowyn and Arwen. Okay, so I have three spirit resources. I'm going to spend one of them on Dwarven Tomb, which lets me pull a spirit card out of my discard pile. And the spirit card I'm going to pull out is Unexpected Courage, and I'm going to spend my last two spirit resources to put that on Arwen. So there we go. I got her all powered up. She can ready. She can defend for five if I discard three cards. So I guess, you know, that, that's what you're supposed to do. That's how this deck defends. All right, let's go questing. So there's five, and Arwen can send three more, so that's eight. We have to get through a six progress location. We're currently up against two. That card surges, and it surges into... Ah, crap. Okay, it's another one of these Spiders of Mirkwood. So those are the ones that attack for a bunch. And they add three threat. So we only make three. I can discard a card, I think. So let's discard that Glaowine that Glaowine found. I can make four out of the six progress. Both of these enemies are coming down to get me. And yeah, this is uh, this is going to be interesting. So one of the Elven Jewelers is going to die. The spider's attacking for a lot. No shadow. So she's dead. And then the runner is attacking for three. Arwen will defend for two. And there is a shadow. Attacking enemy gets plus one. Return attacking enemy to the staging area after this attack. Okay, nothing I can do about that. I'm glad it was the enemy of only one threat instead of three. All right, so if I discard two cards, I avoid all the damage, but I'm okay with her taking one point of damage. So let's discard Gandalf. I'll, I'll never have five resources I want to spend on him. And I'll block one of the damage, and he still attacked for one more. So let's take one damage and push him back up into staging. All right, I need six attack to kill this guy. I can't do any of the cool tricks like I did with the first spider. I can only attack for four. So two damage there, and yep, let's go into the next round. If I had a spirit resource, I could have killed him. But I'm actually wanting to save that fair and perilous for the final stage of the game. All right, next round. Um, deck's going pretty well. I mean, it's fun. It's definitely a fun type of deck. These are the kind of decks I like to play with all the combos and stuff. But uh, it, it, it needs a little combat help, I think. Lindir, all right. That's a nice questing elf. Hennemarf says, we are going to be up against another enemy. Okay, so when that guy engages you, you have to exhaust somebody. And he's 34 engagement, and I am above that. So he's coming to get me too. That's not good. That that I did not expect to get this many enemies. All right, let's see what Glaywine finds. Now this is interesting. Okay, he found double back. It's a spirit side quest, and when it's defeated, you get to drop your threat by five. If I defeat that, I don't have to engage that spider that's being revealed. And the active location places progress on the current quest when it's explored. The current quest will be the side quest. So all I got to do is clear that active location, and that will let me clear the side quest if I make the side quest the active quest. And then I don't need to engage that spider. So that is totally what I'm going to do. But let's do some planning first. All right, dig out this Elven Light out of my discard pile by spending Eowyn's resource. Elven Light draws me another Silver Harp. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Discard Elven Light to Arwen's ability. I'm going to give the resource to herself. And then after doing a bunch of math, which took a lot longer than it should have, I finally figured it out. So I just, I need to place two progress on the active location. So there's one, there's five willpower going on the quest. I will discard one card. And so that means I'm questing for six, and I'm going to be up against four. One plus one plus two. That makes two progress going on the active location. That lets me place six progress on the current quest. 
So since the side quest was the current quest at the time this location was explored in the quest phase, I get to clear it and I get to drop my threat by five because my threat is now less than the spider's threat. I don't need to engage it, which is really good. All right, we're gonna travel to the Tangled Grove and I have to discard a card, but my silver harp is still ready. So whatever I discard, I can pull back into my hand, Lindir. All right, we're gonna pull him back. And now we're gonna engage the runner again. This time I have resources. If I get a hasty stroke, I can cancel any shadows. All right, once again, elven jewelers are going to get attacked by these spiders of Mirkwood. They, uh, they're they not doing well against them. Uh, she's dead. Okay, so that's the third elven jeweler killed by one of these spiders of Mirkwood. And then Arwen will defend and then ready. So two against three at the moment. No shadow. If I discard one card, she will not take damage. So I'm going to spend a resource because you have an action window. After you reveal the shadow, you have an action window. So I'm taking the action. I'm using Elven Light. I pull back Elven Light and another card. And then I'm using the action on Protector of Lorien to discard a card. And there I just defended three against three. And then I could pull back Elven Light and discard it again to get another defensive boost. You can do it three times. Okay, I have enough attack to kill the spiders and the runner is still engaged with me. That's fine. Okay, that was cool. That was cool. I'm glad I was able to show off some more tricks and combos and timings you can do with uh, this deck. This deck is is definitely more fun to play. I mean, I'm, I'm getting lots of fun choices, fun things I can choose to do. I mean, it all comes from card draw and having cards in my hand, giving me the opportunities to do stuff. All right, Hennemar says, up next is another Tangled Grove. So that's just a one threat location. So we're only gonna be up against three threat. We gotta make 12 on the quest. Okay, uh, so when that spider engages me, I'm gonna have to exhaust somebody. Okay, I got lots of harps in hand. I also have Galdor. So what's really good about this deck is you can get into a situation where when you're discarding cards, you're really not discarding them. Your harps are triggering, Galdor can trigger. So you're you're not really losing ground with your cards you're discarding. So that's fun, but that takes a while to get there. Let's pull back Elven Light. Uh, we get a Hammersmith, so if I play him from my hand, he pulls back the topmost attachment, and that is going to be the Long Defeat. Um, that's not a bad one to get back if you need it. I don't need it now. If I had a bunch of damage all over the place, that would be pretty tempting. All right, I'm going to discard Elven Light, gain my fourth lore resource, and then I'm going to play Galdor. He's got great stats, and after a card is discarded from my hand, I can draw a card. So it works with Silver Harp because the Silver Harp says after you discard the card. So you can discard a card, trigger the Silver Harp to yank it back, and Galdor still draws you a card. Really, really cool, really fun. All right, let's pull back Elven Light and another c -c -c Courage. Okay, cool. All right, quest phase. So we are sending three plus four plus one plus two. If I do my math right, that is 10. And we know we're going to be up against three. And the active location is going to eat up some of the progress. But we are going to start making our way towards the 12 on the main quest. So we are at, there it is, four. And we got eight more to go. I can discard a card. Let's discard a card. So I will discard, doesn't matter because I yank it right back. So there we go. I will discard a card to Eowyn to boost. And then I will draw a card thanks to Galdor. I can even boost it by three more because Arwen's on the quest if I wanted to discard three cards. But I, I don't really need to. But it is good to know that this deck can let you do some monster questing and exact questing. So paired up with that Dunedain deck, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Alrighty, uh, I could travel, but I'm not going to. I could engage that spider, but I'm not going to. Let's defend for two against three. Uh, deal one damage to an exhausted character you control. No, that's fine. Let's just deal a damage to Galdor. He's got four hit points. I don't need to cancel that. And then if I discard a card, I can avoid taking any damage. Looks like I forgot to do that, but I i mean, obviously, I have plenty of cards to discard. And there we go. I mean, Glaywine just drew me a card I don't need. Okay, next round. Let's try to get out of here. We have 5 of 12 progress on the quest. I know I'm going to have a boss fight here at stage 3, and I'm, I'm kind of set up for it. I think I can handle it. We draw my third Elven Jeweler. 
So that, that's a real easy card to get in play right now. All right, uh, let's see. What are we up against? This time it's going to be Driven by Shadow. It's going to add two threat. It's plus one threat for every location or enemy in the staging area. So we're only adding two threat. I have more cards in hand than I do in my deck. Options galore here. So I want to get another Silver Harp in play. They're not unique. They just have to go on a Spirit Hero. So let's spend two resources. So now I can discard two cards and I get them right back into my hand. So choose whatever two cards you want. And I can put in the Elven Jeweler. I'm also going to discard a card to Eowyn to get that resource. So now I have plenty of resources. Because I discarded a card, I can draw a stand and fight thanks to Galdor. Yep, this is this is fun. I mean, this is fun. I've, I've played Noldor type decks like this before and they are a lot of fun to play. Takes a little bit get it, uh, to get used to, so I'm glad this deck list exists. You know, play this deck against a quest like the Oath and kind of get a feel for how Noldor work. All right, putting in the Elven Jeweler, like I said, I can discard whatever cards I want, and then the Harps are going to bring them right back. So I'm going to discard a Harp and Elven Light, and then I think I'll just bring back the Harp, and then I can spend a resource and bring back Elven Light. All right, Protector of Lorien, it's not limit one. It's just attached to a hero. So I can attach this one to Arwen and she can discard six cards and be defending for eight. I mean, okay. <laughs> I mean, it, I can I can do that for any hero with Protector of Lorien's, but um, I mean, that's what this deck was supposed to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing what the deck suggested I do. All right, let's go questing. There's three, there's seven, uh, there's nine. 10 and I know I'm going to be up against five so I can make five progress I need to make two more so if I discard two cards I can get up to 12 so let's discard two cards one of them I can yank back with the harp so let's discard a harp and then have it yanked back with a harp so we've just increased my willpower by one and now I'm going to spend a resource pull back elven light and then discard elven light elven light finds me a northern trekker. Okay, I'll discard that elven light, and now I've quested for enough to place the remaining progress I need on the quest. And remember, all this is happening in the action window that happens after staging. You're allowed to adjust your willpower after staging with actions like this. All right, we're going to add the goblin troop to the staging area, and then this stage can't be defeated while the goblin troop is in play, and we need to make six progress. The goblin troop is pretty nasty takes a bunch of attack to kill this guy. He attacks for five. Any other goblin enemies engaged if you get plus one to their attack and defense. Okay, uh, my threat is still low enough that I don't need to engage these spiders, but I think I will. Let's engage the spider, and I have to exhaust somebody, so I will exhaust Glaywine, and then I'm hoping I can kill the spiders this round. So let's defend with Arwen. And there is no shadow. Okay, great. And if I spend a resource, pull back Elven Light. And then there's Haste Stroke. And if I discard Elven Light, I take no damage. And now, can I kill this guy? I can attack for a total of four. That's enough. Dead. Okay. So, yeah, this deck, it is killing weak enemies, which if in a multiplayer game, you would say, okay, I can take the weakest enemy. I can handle that. Let me focus on questing. Let me uh, hopefully cancel stuff, and some other deck will take on the big enemies. Okay, um, yeah, let's go. If I make six progress and kill the troop, we win. We get a weaver. All right, let's see what Hendemarf says is coming. Ah, okay, it's just a card that's going to add two threats. So I'm going to do some math and figure out how we win this round. All right, I got it all figured out. First thing I'm going to do, discard a card and get a resource and then I'm going to spend two resources to put another unexpected courage on Arwen. So she has two protectors of Lorien and two unexpected courages and I'm leaving one spirit resource. I now need to quest for a total of 12. So there's one, that's five, and then that will be eight. I will ready myself and then I can discard cards to boost my willpower because protectors of Lorien let me discard cards, and so does Eowyn. So Eowyn gets me to nine, and then if I discard three cards, doesn't matter which ones, 
I boost my willpower by three. I'm just gonna leave one in the discard pile. My harps pull back two. I could actually trigger Galdor now. And there we go. So I have quested for enough. I've made six progress. We're engaging the troop. Okay, now Arwen will defend the goblin troop. And the shadow is nothing. Okay, that was the only thing that could have screwed me over is if the shadow would have pushed him back. I would have had to use Hasty Stroke, and then I don't think I could have killed him. Okay, I'm going to discard three cards. Arwen takes no damage. And now we just need to muster up the attack. So Fair and Perilous lets me choose a Noldor or Sylvan, and I can add their willpower to their attack. And so, I mean, yeah, Arwen gets, you know, a willpower boost when I discard cards. And I had two Protectors of Lorien, so I could really boost her willpower up and then that would boost her attack and that's a dead goblin troop and that was a victory um fun fun deck definitely more fun than the other one but not strong i mean early game you could easily lose this is definitely a deck that would do well in multiplayer and i am looking forward to playing a multiplayer game so that's what you're going to see next i'm going to take these two decks up against Intruders in Chetwood. That's the first quest in the Angmore Awakens. I always say Awakens. Awakened cycle. And we'll see how they do together as a fellowship. And then I think I'm going to do a little deck building. I'll try to make a Dunedine deck that uses more of the Dunedine allies. And then I think the other deck won't have to be elf focused. I think it will have some, but I'm I'm not going to call it like a Noldor deck or an elf deck. It's just going to be a a deck using some of the other cards that are available and I'll see if each deck is any good by itself and how they work together as a fellowship. Okay everybody, hope you enjoyed this video. Take care. Bye-bye.